So uh, I'm Bill Lavely, and uh, I'm going to chair this session. I actually rushed over here so that I could uh, see Shelley Rigger, and only just now realized that nobody knows where Shelley is. She was supposed to come in last night, and we have not heard from her. So I am going to uh, take uh, the role uh, of chair here. And um, uh, so our first speaker today is Dafit Fell of SOAS uh, at the University of London. And he is going to report to us virtually. Great. Hi there. Thanks. Thanks, Bill, for that introduction. So um, it's a pleasure to be back at the um, uh, World Congress talking about a topic that we discussed at the second World Congress back in 2015. Um, so, um, um, so what I'm going to do then is talk a little bit about my own reflections on running this Taiwan uh, book series, the Routledge um, uh, Taiwan book series. Um, and I'm just going to talk about some of the, the ways that this uh, series has developed, uh, some of the challenges to running a Taiwan studies series. And also I'll talk a little bit about how to actually um, make this series sustainable. Particularly I'll talk about my experience of um, promoting uh, academic books on, uh, on Taiwan. So we created the series back in 2009. Uh, at a very, very different time uh, compared to where we are now in terms of the Taiwan Studies publishing uh, field. Uh, in some respects, it was quite a uncertain uh, time. Uh, the Emmy Sharp Taiwan series had, I think, more or less closed by then. There was a German series at Harasovitz, but by 2009, that series seemed to have gone uh, pretty uh, quiet. But in contrast, within Europe itself, I think there was a a real sense of um, optimism that the field of Taiwan studies was taking off. So in that respect, it felt like a, a good time to uh, create a series. Um, initially, the series started quite slowly with just a couple of books in the first uh, two years. But by year three, uh, 2011, we had one of the best years of the series with, I think, uh, I think five uh, books uh, coming out and very rapidly. Uh, this became the most active Taiwan Studies um, uh, book series. So, uh, so far in, uh, what is it, 12, 13 years, we've now published 39 uh, books. So we have a kind of a mixture of, um, we have about, I think, 22 edited volumes, 16 monographs, um, and one uh, textbook. And I think another way you can get a sense of how uh, the series, and I think the field has developed, is the fact that 2021 was the best ever, ever year for the series, with six uh, books coming out um, uh, that, that year. Um, and I think another way we can get a feel of how um, Taiwan Studies Publishing has developed is the, the fact that it's not the only series. Um, so last year at the SOAS Taiwan Studies Summer School, we ran a Taiwan Studies book series um, uh, editors uh, roundtable. Um, and, uh, and I'm glad we have, have uh, Nikki here uh, today to talk about the, the Brill series. But it's not only uh, us uh, and Brill, uh, there's a series on Taiwan literature at uh, Cambria, another one on Sinophone and Taiwan Studies literature at Springer. Uh, we have the uh, Camphor, a series which is very, very um, active. Um, and since last year, a, a new ser Taiwan series has appeared at, at Cambridge. And of course, we'll also hear about the International Journal of Taiwan Studies, which again, I think is a really important breakthrough. And I wanted to kind of contrast where we are today with these multiple competing Taiwan series with where um, we were in uh, nine years ago. So here we have a picture on the right from a uh, round table on Taiwan Studies Publishing that we held in Academia Sinica in 2013. Um, and at that point, uh, we just had the one series. And one of the members of the audience that day went on to create the uh, Camphor uh, book series. We're still talking about, is it possible to have a, a journal? And we've seen that 
um, uh, the International Journal has been a remarkable uh, success. Okay, so um, how do you actually publish in a uh, Taiwan Studies series? Well, I think one of the most important um, places in that process is the these kind of informal conversations that we have in conferences like uh, this. In the past, I would join particularly the European uh, Taiwan Studies Conference, and we would have conversations about potential book uh, ideas. We can also do that through um, emails, and I think this is a really good uh, way to get a sense of, of whether your book will fit a certain uh, uh, series. The next uh, stage is that of the book proposal. And I would say that generally, um, that is the, the critical stage. Generally, when we, um, with, at least with my series, when we reject a, a proposal, we do it at that, at that stage. While when we send a, a book out to review, usually we, we actually think this book really has potential. Uh, we really want it to um, uh, be uh, published. Usually, um, except with more established authors, we tend to try to have as much of the book uh, ready to go to review, even with um, edited uh, volumes. There may be just a, a few missing uh, chapters. So what do we look to, uh, to publish in the, uh, in the series? Well, I'd say that we're really looking for things that are going to make an important contribution to the Taiwan studies field in the field of humanities and social science. I think another thing that I'm looking for in proposals is for books that can be used for teaching. I think that teaching is one of the things that, at least in my university, that I put a lot of uh, stress on. And so many of the books that we published in the series are on the reading list for our, um, our modules. Naturally, we're looking for things that are both uh, academically uh, strong, uh, but they also need to have that uh, potential to actually break even. So uh, we have had a few cases where we've had proposals for really strong projects, but eventually they, we've decided not to uh, take them up because we had question marks about how well they would do, uh, particularly in the, uh, in the library market. Another very common question that I get is about whether or not we will publish PhD dissertations. Uh, and while we do welcome uh, PhD transition uh, proposals, um, they're not so easy to, uh, to publish for a number of uh, reasons. So far, we've just published uh, four PhD transition uh, books. Um, and I think that one of the factors here is that, that those first couple of years after the PhD can be very challenging unless you have a, a postdoc. Okay. So there have been a lot of challenges over the last 13 years in running this, this series. I think one of them, and, and something that I devote a lot of attention to, is try to get good proposals. And, and I think some academic disciplines have been easier to get, for example, particularly in um, sociology. I've had more problems, for example, among Taiwanese political scientists. Another challenge is, is finding reviewers, because reviewers are paid a lot of, um, uh, of money to review manuscripts. A further problem that I'll touch upon is that of the price. And, and this is a constant problem that to a large extent, a lot of the things that we publish are really targeted at the uh, university library uh, market. And sadly, too few of our books have gone straight to paperback. They tend to come out in paperback after 18 uh, months. So in the next, um, uh, the final part of the of today's talk, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how to actually market um, uh, our uh, books. And one of the things I think we find, and, and this slide really shows the most popular books so far in the series, is that um, successful marketing really depends on, a, on the combined effort of the publisher, the series editor, and the author. And I, and I think the key thing for the author is just to um, do as much as you can to actually raise the visibility of the book. Uh, often beyond the regular um, uh, readership. Okay, so how do you actually raise the visibility of the, uh, the books? In my first book uh, that I published, I didn't do anything. Uh, but over time, I spent more and more, put more and more effort into um, uh, marketing the books. And I really took this to a new level uh, with my 2021 promotion of Taiwan's Green Parties. 
So book launches, I think, is is one uh, traditional venue. Uh, changing different uh, talks for different audiences. But I think also the fact that we can do online talks really creates more opportunities. So with the, the Green Party's book, I could do talks in places like Thailand, Sweden, without actually leaving the, the office. But I still think that nothing can beat that experience of the in-person um, uh, book uh, talk. I think another thing that I think is really useful is getting media attention to books. Um, and one of the things I've done, um, I found again really useful is podcasts with things like New Books uh, Network, uh, Ghost Island uh, Media. Again, it's reaching a different uh, audience. And, I, and for me, I think it was really uh, rewarding. Another thing that um, we need to do is getting academic um, book reviews, but also um, um, po um, uh, blog reviews, I think are also extremely useful for reaching different audiences, such as um, the uh, New Blue magazine, Taipei Times. These are all, I think, useful uh, platforms. And this is also quite important for getting library or librarian attention. Um, and with um, another thing that I think we need to do is to uh, lobby librarians. Um, and librarians tell us that they, they get their, um, uh, they pay a lot of attention to academic recommendations. So be really kind of shameless in the way you lobby uh, libraries. And I think another thing that I found um, critically important is use of social media to raise visibility. So for example, um, uh, talks on YouTube, um, tweeting about uh, books. And in this occasion, I also tried using a, uh, a book um, Facebook page that I've been now running for, uh, let me see, um, over a, a, a year now. And I think the last thing I would add is just to say a few words about what you can do to actually help make these kind of series uh, sustainable. I think one of the key things to do is just to make sure your libraries uh, order copies of books in, this, in these various Taiwan study series. Um, make sure that your library has the International Journal of Taiwan Studies. And one of the things that we found in our, um, is that um, a lot of places we would expect to have access to these books and the IGTS don't actually have them. So it just takes a little bit more uh, lobbying. Try to include the books or book chapters into your teaching courses. And of course, lastly, um, please try to um, in, encourage your colleagues to submit both to the journal, but I think also to the various book series. That's what we really need, need to get strong uh, book proposals. Um, and I look forward to sharing um, um, or hearing about the other series and to making our field more sustainable. And let me finish there. Thank you very much, uh, David. Now, uh, I wanted to just say that we've heard from Shelley Rieger, and she is on her way and should be here shortly. So I just wanted to let you know that. Um, our next speaker is Nikki Ellsford of the School of Language and Global Studies, University of Central Lancashire. Thank you. So hi, thank you very much. Um, so I'm gonna kind of talk about the Braille series now. The Braille series is a new series um, within the field of Taiwan studies, but it isn't new to publishing on Taiwan. There have been a number of different publications that go through. Obviously, one part of the conversations that we're having here at the World Congress will be on the encyclopedia that being published with Braille and Braille being the home for the International Journal of Taiwan Studies. But the actual series, the Brill series, really is the brainchild of the late Bruce Jacobs, who sadly passed away in November of 2019. Um, and Bruce had always kind of considered the idea about putting together kind of a series within, within Europe. Um, Brill had published a number of his previous work, and he had a very close relationship with the editors at the series itself. Um, Bruce um, spoke to both myself and Mark Harrison about the ideas of taking it on as a kind of a three-way editorship. And we, we spoke um, amongst ourselves about kind of how we could shape the field through this new series. Um, and so um, now um, with, with, with Bruce passing, it's down to Mark and I 
um, to think about the ways in which that we can look at the, the field of study itself. And so one of the things for us is that although there are a number of different competing um, public publishers that look at Taiwan series, we're in no way in competition. And I think Daffy really summed it up really well when it looks at ways in which that we can make the field sustainable. And I think in the European context, we've we've moved on from the conversation of whether Taiwan studies is a field of studies. I think this is something that we now take very much for granted, but it's the way in which that that field can be shaped within the types of works that could be submitted. And so, so for us, we, we are looking at um, work that is both in a cross-disciplinary nature, translated work with something in which that Mark and I have spoken about, um, and the idea of comparative research. And I think if we were to think back to Michael Shaw's keynote speech when he talked about his own personal multiple identities, both as a Taiwan sociologist, an Asian sociologist, and a global sociologist, I think we can start to see that just through those kind of concepts of multiple identities, we can shift and move from the local, the regional, to an international. Um, and so the idea of studying Taiwan, then putting that study into a comparative thing, and then by doing so, we can begin to situate Taiwan. And I think this very much kind of sums up very, the ideas that we have within the series itself. Um, the aims of the, of the publication or the aims of the, of the series is to reach a wider audience, whether this is academic, informed readers, as well as policymakers. And so we, like other series, do encounter our own limitations and difficulties within the series, most notably the cost of the publication upon our release. And we just always want to let you know that we don't really have a say in that. Um, and so we always would first and foremost encourage libraries and the libraries to purchase these books. Um, and these are the best ways in which that we can, we can get access to this. Another area that we're seeing an increased development, particularly within the UK, is a shift towards open access. Um, and then this is something which does come with great cost, um, but it is something in which that we as, a seri as series editors are very much open to in terms of the suggestion. And we think that research should be made available uh, to, to all. Um, one of the other kind of areas in which that we start to see the development are series that attach to association. So uh, although this is not kind of a fixed thing, but it was definitely very much part of what Bruce wanted as part of the legacy within the Austra Australasian Taiwan Studies Association. Um, and so the so the Bruce series is very much working with these in the ways of which to spread ideas about works to be published within, within it. Um, and so we also have the European Association of Taiwan Studies, of where the International Journal of Taiwan Studies, as I mentioned, is also within the Brill. So Brill is always a series that has been there at the forefront of the promoting of Taiwan Studies. And what we hope to do and hope to achieve is that we can kind of somehow sustain that and so that Brill can continue to kind of publish work on Taiwan itself. So um, I've left some... Uh, some kind of leaflets out on the desk down by room uh, 250, if anyone's kind of interesting. And I do always say if you can, can promote that amongst yourself, it's as always, it's always best. The wider the reach, the better, the better the outcome, so to speak. And so um, one of the key things, and I think Daffy spoke about this, is the ways in which that we look at new ways of trying to not only promote the series and the publications of Taiwan studies, but also what we can do in terms of dissemination afterwards. And so one of the things that we started with was conversations, so conversations with academics to the shaping of new ideas or new directions within Taiwan studies. Um, and so in 2018, um, at the University of Central Lancashire, we held a conference on the shaping of the landscapes in both Taiwan studies and Korean studies to look at how there are shared similarities and differences. And so one outcome from this was the first book in the series, which was edited by, by Bruce, myself, and a colleague in Korean studies, um, So Jin Lim. Um, one of the things that happened was that sadly, Bruce passed away before the book was published itself. And, um, and the most difficult thing for me 
was to complete his introduction. So he actually had written his introduction to a certain point, but it wasn't finished. And so I had to pick that up. But we can see from the chapters, what we have done is that we have looked at bringing and bridging two different area studies, disciplines, by bringing them together in a comparative perspective. And we, we feel that perhaps this, this book is kind of emulates the types of areas that we want the, the series to develop in. Um, so that kind of brings me back to the end kind of, of uh, my short kind of introduction to this new series. And I think as a round table, it's best to kind of open up for possible questions. I don't know, Mark, if you had anything to add at this point or have I summed it, summed it up? Exemplary summing up. Um, I would just add the, the Australian Association of the Osteologist Association of Primary Studies is, um, is very new. Um, Could you please come to the Sorry, 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 Mike. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> I was just going to add that the uh, Australasian Association of Taiwan Studies is very new. Um, it's really only been going maybe a year or so. There was a couple of events last year. Um, there's an event right now, actually, which unfortunately they organized that, that, that coincided with this event. Um, and I think it speaks of um, uh, the the challenges, you know, the, the work that's going on to try and develop the field and um, uh, in, outside of Europe and North America. Um, and I, I know this book series, you know, uh, both Nick and I are very committed to it as a way to, to you know, strengthen the study of Taiwan globally uh, and take on th uh, some of the themes that some of the other series uh, are not, um, uh, haven't quite done in the way that we're trying to. Thanks. And so thanks very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. And I just wanted to mention that the Brill pamphlet that Nikki mentioned is in your registration package. So look for it there. And our next speaker is uh, Lori Hagman of the University of Washington Press. Hello, everybody, and um, thank you, Bill. The um, presentations that Dafid and Nikki uh, gave you have been a little more from the, the field development side of things, and my talk focuses more on the publisher's perspective and how publishers see series and how the University of Washington Press sees this art particular new um, series and Taiwan studies, because I think for authors, it's often um, very eye-opening and necessary to, th to think of your book as a product that your publisher will have to sell and, and you see in a more commercial kind of way. So at the University of Washington Press, I'm the acquiring editor who handles most of our Asian studies publications. And my own academic background is in China studies. I also handle anthropology, and a range of environment-related topics. I manage eight series, four of which I started. Deciding to start a new series and making it happen, as opposed to just thinking about it, is a long process. The audience for a series needs to match a publisher's marketing channels because marketing is expensive. For example, having a booth in the exhibit hall at an annual meeting of a scholarly association costs thousands of dollars. So a press needs to publish a critical mass of books in a given subject to make exhibiting feasible. For example, for that reason, UW Press always exhibits at the Association for Asian Studies meeting, but not at the meeting of the Modern Language Association. At AAS, we have so many new and recently published books that we need a double booth to display them all. Books with interdisciplinary appeal are ideal because they can be marketed to multiple audiences. When University of Washington professors James Lin, Bill Lavely, and Madeline Dong first approached me in 2017, it's been five years, Bill, can you believe that, <laughs> about possibly starting a new series, the idea of focusing on Taiwan was immediately appealing. Taiwan studies is a growing academic field and a topic of popular international interest. Political, economic, and cultural news involving Taiwan attracts readers who are curious about the context of current events and the history that led to Taiwan's status as a world actor today. 
Among books on Taiwan that UW Press had already published at that time were Joe Allen's Taipei City of Displacement, which won the Association for Asian Studies Levinson Prize in 2014, and My Fight for a New Taiwan by former Taiwan Vice President Liu Xiaolian and Ashley Essery. In a series of discussions with the series editors, press editors, and marketing experts, we decided how to focus the series by topic, time period, and discipline, how many volumes to publish per year, what to call it, and how to describe it in a formal announcement inviting manuscript submissions. Our description is worth citing in full here. Taiwan Studies is a dynamic, emerging interdisciplinary field in need of scholarly book-length inquiries into themes germane to Taiwan's history and society. Among these are the island's consecutive colonizations, rapid economic growth, maturing democracy, evolving national identity, race and ethnicity, indigenous peoples, social and cultural change, and contested international position in the shadow of rising China. This new series will highlight these themes and more as they affect interactions between Taiwan and the larger world. Taiwan has not only been influenced by global capitalism, migration, colonialism, and modernity, but has also contributed to and shaped these forces in unique ways. The Taiwan in the World series seeks to publish leading edge scholarship on Taiwan, including works of history, social science and humanities, and covering the early, modern, late modern and contemporary periods. We are particularly interested in single authored books that advance the field of Taiwan studies by providing new theoretical insights, exploring intersections of multiple social science and humanities disciplines and challenging pre-existing assumptions. We welcome innovative works that will advance the teaching of Taiwan studies, inform policy discussions, and interest general readers. That's the end of our formal description. Um, we decided that the series would aim to publish an average of one book a year, that at least in the beginning, those would be limited to monographs, that length would be limited to 90,000 words, and that books would be published in affordable paperback editions. The UW Taiwan Studies program provides a subvention to make this possible. A little financial help um, helps a lot. When evaluating submissions, aside from topical fit, we look for originality of content, editorial quality, breadth and size of the market, and potential for use in teaching. Authors should aim to reach multiple audiences, both to distribute their content widely and to make their book economically viable. Publishing is a competitive process from beginning to end. Overall, only about 5% of the proposals that an editor receives will result in a published book. Although proposals for volumes in a series have a slightly better odds because they usually are more closely aligned with the expertise of the publisher to which they're submitted. Successful proposals are clear and brief. They describe a book that would not be difficult to develop or expensive to produce and could be marketed easily to the publisher's established channels. The topic should be unique and of interest to cross-disciplinary readers, and the descriptive language in the proposal should suggest that the manuscript itself will be concisely and engagingly written. The editorial process for each volume in the Taiwan in the World series begins with contact between an author and one of the series editors or with me. I collect a set of information from the author, including a brief prospectus between two and four pages, mentioning the scope and significance of the subject, audience, competing or related books, length in words, include, that includes notes and bibliography, the number and type of illustrations, whether material from the book project has been published as journal articles or book chapters, and estimated completion date. One sentence, next item that should be enclosed somehow or included in the proposal is a one sentence answer to the questions, what central question does this manuscript explore? What does it find and why does it matter? The author's CV, table of contents, the introduction and another sample chapter, and the, these should be fairly polished, not say 
chapters from an unrevised dissertation. A few sample illustrations, if there will be any in the book. This information is discussed by the series editors and by the press's acquisitions team. And if all are in favor, we invite the author to submit the complete manuscript when it's ready, which can be immediately or a year or two in the future. When the complete manuscript arrives, the series editors examine it to confirm that it meets our expectations and is ready for peer review. We agree on a list of qualified reviewers and I handle the process of lining up readers, circulating their reports, and communicating with authors about any needed revision. After successful peer review and acceptance by our faculty press committee, which consists of 14 professors from various departments, a manuscript is officially scheduled for publication. The timeline from beginning of peer review to finished books is typically 18 to 24 months but can take longer if substantial revision and a second round of peer review is needed. After peer review, revision, copy editing, design, production, and finally publication, the competition continues as tens of thousands of new scholarly books each year vie for attention of book reviewers, librarians, and booksellers. Yes, that's right, I said tens of thousands. And that doesn't include the hundreds of thousands of books that, that are published every year by trade publishers. So these uh, you know, authors who think that every academic library in the country will buy their book, um, no, because they would have to buy tens of thousands of other books too. Lots of competition. Um, a book needs the support of reviewers, librarians, and booksellers to be discoverable for readers. To capture their attention, a book subject and the reason the subject is interesting and worth reading about should be obvious from the book's title and from the cover description. When a potential reader skims the table of contents in introduction, intriguing questions should be raised but not fully answered, compelling further reading. Editors ponder these factors at every stage of the publication process, and especially when they receive a new proposal from an author. They want to know. What, a new, what is new about this author's approach? Why is the subject important? What are the author's qualifications to write on this topic? Who will the audience be? And can our press reach that audience? We, we turn down a lot of manuscripts that are clearly very high quality, but we don't think we're the right publisher for them. Um, these considerations are critical for every volume in our Taiwan in the World series. In building a new series, we're also attentive to offering a set of books on complementary but distinctive topics by authors with different backgrounds. We want our series to be balanced. We want it to be to raise questions about Taiwan's place in the world. So where is our series now? Five years after we started talking about it. When will we have real books for you to read? We currently have two manuscripts in active peer review another one that is being revised after an initial round of peer review, and another one that's under advanced contract with the complete manuscript due in December this year. So published books should start appearing in 2023. We're also in conversation with other authors whose manuscripts aren't yet complete. So you can see that there is a growing list of volumes inching toward publication. Until manuscripts are officially accepted, we can't announce their authors or their titles, but I can tell you that those in our initial set of peer review are exciting and thematically diverse. Published books in a new series serve as magnets to attract more submissions, and as the range and quality of the series becomes apparent, submissions increase and acceptance becomes more competitive. The series evolves, taking on a life of its own, like a mosaic in which each book contributes color and shape. Stay tuned for the first tiles that, and that's tiles, not titles, like tiles in a mosaic, that will begin to form the Taiwan and the World Series mural. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. And our next and last speaker is Mingye Ronsley of the School of Oriental and African Studies. Hello everyone. Um, now seeing the 
seeing the session live, um, I really wish I was there to meet with the old friends and also new new friends. Um, but thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk about International Journal of Taiwan Studies. Okay, um, although this is a journal, uh, not book series, but from the previous speakers that I find actually we do share a lot of similar experiences. So for example, um, to think about something until it happened really take a long time. Uh, we talk about um, to establish in a journal since 2015 at the last World Congress of Taiwan Studies in London. Um, but luckily, you know, so at that time, everybody was really happy as we seen the timing was right. And also the, um, the human resources are available. Everybody's really eager to have such a platform to be established. Um, but took a long time. Finally, we have the first issue published in 2018. Um, so right up to this year, we also established for five years. So over the past five years, I think IJTS has um, matured a lot and continue to grow. So we are very happy about this result and will aim you know, to, to continue to deliver and make it even better. Um, so the achievement so far, so for example, the journal is now in Scopus and also in the emerging source of the citation index that is Web of Science. So waiting to be uh, moving to the next stage uh, for SSCI or AHCI, depending on the uh, Web of Science um, findings and then their assessment. Okay. Um, so in, the, uh, in terms of the submission, we really, you know, so the purpose of this talk today really would like to drum up as much interest and in submission from all of you as much as possible. So we open to any original research articles, as you can see the uh, word limit on the slide. Um, we also publish research notes, which is shorter, but also, you know, very, um, um, very into kind of a, a research article type of writing. So in other words, this is not a shortcut. Um, it, it just actually have a new approach, uh, perhaps a new concept to discuss, hence, you know, probably shorter and tighter in that sense. And we every issue, we also have a lot of book reviews that we publish. So if you have any books that you would like to review, we will also encourage you to contact us. Um, and then, you know, we will contact the publishers to get hold of the book uh, the copies for you to review for us. Um, in terms of books we reviewed can be published in any language, but the review itself will be written in English. So in addition to um, these three type of articles we publish in every issue, uh, we also from time to time invite conference report, um, also review essays, um, and perhaps uh, or forums, for example. So at the same time, if you have any ideas that you want to discuss, please just write to us. Um, so we will uh, consider and, and try to work with you. So we have a variety of type of publications that can be printed in our journal. We also accept uh, topical sections, um, but while we publish a topical session, we will still have original uh, in independent research articles that are published in the issue. So in other words, you don't have to worry about if your article fit into a particular theme or not. Um, so just submit to us. That is the most important thing. Um, and so far, every few years, we will discuss with Brio. And um, so we have already um, expanded our page numbers. And this also demonstrates on the trend of the active um, scholarship of Taiwan Studies scholars. Um, so um, at the moment, actually, we are also con uh, considering to discuss with our publisher, and perhaps we will continue to expand our page number, maybe in the next two years, because I do find uh, more and more material that we need to, uh, um, um, would like to include um, to accommodate, but the page numbers is already kind of limited to this development trend. Um, so, you know, while it was a headache for editors, but it's really um, a very encouraging sign to the field. Right. Um, so, 
this is actually really talking about the trend of uh, global Taiwan studies. And as Chen Guangxin in the past talking about, you know, using Asia as a method, and we find Taiwan studies very much um, using this um, or actually materializing this um, methodology or this perspective. So very much like we're using Taiwan as a method. Um, so there is this um, inside out and also outside in um, perspective. So, you know, from within Taiwan, but then actually you look out and also into the di disciplines to make that connection, but also discipline um, scholars that from their own different research perspective, at the same time, they might find Taiwan actually provide very valuable case studies or comparative uh, examples and to deepen and also challenge perhaps certain um, established uh, methods or theories and try to refine it further. So to always make Taiwan studies more relevant to the global trend and, and to build our intellect, uh, common intellectual uh, foundation. Um, so these are uh, various examples um, that we don't have any limited perspective or methodology that we prefer. So the forum so far, for example, we published, have discussed the possibility of linking Taiwan studies with China studies fields, or how to link Taiwan studies with the world, and also to talk about cross-strait studies versus liangan, or you can say um, uh, trans-strait uh, studies, um, this kind of difference. Um, and also to discuss how to use Taiwan as a epistemic challenger. Right, so this is the um, journal, uh, International Journal of Taiwan Studies website, and we will encourage you to uh, look into our website um up to now actually we do find um over the past five years especially last year there are a lot more institutions from south korea uh, uk and also united states subscribe to taiwan uh, our journal um there are also many other countries you know have their subscriptions um, but we would just like to take this opportunity to encourage all the participants. Um, like previous speaker said, if you can lobby to your libraries, perhaps actually we will also uh, make more uh, subscriptions and make the journal uh, more accessible to the academics um, in the field that you can access and read and at the same time subs um, uh, submit to our journal. Um, so I think so I'll probably start from, I'll stop here and just leave the rest for our um, Q&A. So any questions, I'll be re very happy to just answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ronsley. Now um, we have question and answer, and I'm going to change the way we do this a little bit. If you have a a question, I'd like to invite you to come up and uh, repeat your question before us. That will save some time and translation. Now, don't all speak at once. Uh, yes, come on up. Chun Yi Li. Thank you. Um, hello, Mingye. And uh, my question actually is directed to Laurie. Um, the new series of Taiwan study of UW is very exciting and everything. But as you also mentioned that you captured eight series mm -hmm. of UW, are there any, because it's actually inspired by what Mingye presentation of linking Taiwan studies with the Chinese studies. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, if there's a manuscript that is kind of cross China, Taiwan um, on a various subject, uh, would be classified more as a Taiwan study or China study? Thank you. That's an interesting question. Oh, sorry. Um, 
we haven't run into this question yet, and um, Bill, maybe you can speak to it too, but um, I'm guessing that it would depend on the degree to which it's centered on Taiwan, as opposed to Taiwan being more of a peripheral aspect. But, th but this series is specifically on Taiwan, and, and we've, we have published quite a few books that have Taiwan as a component. Um, I'm thinking of um, John Shepard's recent, an anthropologist's recent book on foot binding in traditional China, where a very large part of his research and data comes from demographic studies in Taiwan. But I wouldn't call that Taiwan studies. You know, it, it's it just depends on where the balance and and the focus is. I think, Bill. Bill, do you want to elaborate on that? Would would our series ever include anything about? Well, like, historically, I mean, it would have to, yeah, because yeah. otherwise the people uh, oh, right. online won't hear us. Uh, I know that the case you're talking about very clearly, and although you might not consider that Taiwan studies. Uh, about three quarters of the content of the book, you know, or originated from um, data from Taiwan, and it involved kind of the politics of colonial Taiwan and okay. other themes. I thought that this clearly qualified as Taiwan mm -hmm. studies, mm -hmm. but as I recall, uh, Professor Shepard uh, preferred that it be con. con uh, considered China studies, which of course it certainly did, because I think China studies has a larger market. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's a mm -hmm. really important aspect of it. So yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, anyway, I think the point is we would do it on a case by case basis. Can can we say that that yeah we're open open in the future to considering. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Karis Templeman. So it, it's really exciting to me to see that there are now three different book series all focused on Taiwan. Uh, as someone who's you know, potentially going to publish a book in the future, uh, what is the comparative advantage of each one in your view? Now that you're, you're all here, you can argue among yourselves perhaps a little bit about this, but what, uh, given what you've seen here, um, is there one that's focused more on contemporary Taiwan versus historical Taiwan? Is there a series that is focused more on if Taiwan is a, a, a key piece of a larger region versus something that's more specific to issues within Taiwan studies? Uh, and how else would you think about the, the kind of comparative advantages of the three series? 